young are but strong. It's made itself evident that that it is a real art form. By having any random person walk by and say, wow, that is amazing, and then having somebody tell me who's done the spray cans. But it's hard to bring, you know, fine art to a street level like that, because there's so many stigmas attached to it. getting more into it, um, I think it becomes more of a mission and you want to start seeing your shit everywhere you go. <laughs> so it starts off as adventure, then it goes to an ego phase once you start getting, people start like talking about it. Um, and then I think it develops into more about uh, aesthetic concern and form and resolving aesthetic problems. Um, so it becomes less about you and more about producing a certain kind of cultural output, a certain kind of cultural production that speaks to others and has some kind of resonance with others. And that can be on aesthetic grounds alone or political, social kind of grounds. E também, não, não sei qual, qual a causa, eu, até hoje não sei assim, o certo tem uma um ideia do que foi, mas tinha uma revolta muito grande comigo quando eu comecei a pichar. Eu acho que isso hoje eu defino como contra, mesmo, contra o sistema mesmo, contra essa falta de, de cultura, de educação, que eles ficam manipulando e, e limitando o nosso, nosso povo mesmo, então isso não, causa é... uma, uma revolta. Mas é claro né, que isso é inconsciente, hoje, hoje, hoje eu tenho essa consciência, mas na época é inconsciente. Então eu pichei muito no bairro, eu sempre pichei sozinho. Well, the fact is that I'm in the suburbs, you know, far in the suburbs. And I made it easy for me. I could have went out and traveled up and did, you know, did garbage underneath the parkways and watched it get buffed left and right. You know what I mean? For other people to see that I'm, like, toying up my name, I, you know, I don't want to make, make a bad name for myself. So what I did was for two years, I trained myself every day, every other day, painted till it was, like, routine, so I felt like the can was an element, you know what I mean? It was like I was in my element when I was holding a can. I think aesthetically there's a big difference. Obviously the illegal stuff needs to be done relatively quickly. You know, it's often dark under different conditions, different kind of pressure. 
different kind of concerns, adrenaline, your body's operating differently. That's changing the, the, the appearance of it, but I don't necessarily think that makes it worse. A lot of people actually say that the illegal stuff is better to look at precisely for that reason. The actual process of doing it can be very different and I think this is what Stephen Powers sums up the art of getting over this book. And I've heard sentiments along these lines expressed in some of the interviews I've done with people. They sort of say things like graffiti is not always artistic but there's definitely there's an art to doing it. So the difference between legal and illegal is precisely how it's done and a lot of the time that can have a very different impact on viewers because these guys will get up on bridges, they'll get up in these obscure spots and a lot of the times this adds to the mystery of it. How did these guys get up there? How are they doing this? How are they getting away with it? The stealth involved, which I think is you know, kind of interesting. There's two aesthetic components to it, two artistic components, creative components. One is precisely the art of getting it in the locations, you know, and then there's also the actual art, the way it appears, its aesthetic impact, which is all about like getting the throb to look really clean and neat and crisp, and like getting the tag to look highly stylized, right? That's what's really, these guys have pretty nice stylized work in a lot of ways, and they're doing it illegally, they're doing it quick. So they're doubling up on that aesthetic impact in a way. Like I used to do a lot of illegal stuff and even when I was doing that under those conditions there's still this concern that develops with form and how it looks and this is what makes the legal and the illegal stuff very close together so it's not always all about placement you start to become very concerned with form and perfecting a craft or an image or a look or the development of a logo I mean call it whatever you want there's definitely a motivation that is kind of purely aesthetic and it becomes very much about expressivity, about getting every line correct and about achieving an aesthetic form that has a certain impact on its own, whether legal or not. So even within the frame of legality itself, I think there's still a way in which legal graffiti is seen as like something that shouldn't be allowed. Mm -hmm. in a way. Right. And, and, and legal institutions or state institutions are used to like police that boundary as well in any case. Agora eu ainda acho e acredito que por ser legal o, o grafite aqui, é isso que mantém a, a essência do grafite aqui, sabe? As, as raízes e o gostoso de se fazer, mesmo sendo difícil, porque cada vez que se faz, sabe, faz com com um prazer, sabe, se dá de tudo, você sabe que é ilegal. Essa, essa semana eu fiquei sabendo que tem uma equipe de policiais trabalhando contra os grafiteiros mesmo, sabe, são 75, né? Pois é um número muito grande, velho. Tem muito jump over fence over here before. Somewhere over here? I think, no, I think we walked down over there because it was in the woods. Was, we had to duck through the trees. New Jersey is more of a suburban place and more of an 
you know, they don't understand it, nor do they want it, you know what I mean? To, they don't understand that you can make, you know, beautiful pieces of artwork using spray cans, you know, they won't let kids come across and just do that. Who doesn't know that it can be, like, a... The people in the, envi in the suburban environments in New right. Jersey, you know what I mean? Yeah, they no see problem. the stuff underneath the parkway, and they think it's just straight vandalism, and some of the stuff is really good, and it's really thought out and well put together, but... You know, if it's gonna get buffed, you know, it's like you can only live for your pictures. There's different aspects, you know. These guys just see it like, you know, the reason why they go out and do that and don't go out and get legals is because they strictly think that, you know, graffiti is a vandalistic act and that it's, you know, the origin is underneath bridges and doing illegal stuff and catching a hand style everywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? where, you know, there's a lot of different aspects, man. I don't come from that point. Sure, sometimes I want to just tag the, you know, I want to tag that sign, let other people see my name. I want to hit the freeway just so I, you know, I feel jealous when I see their shit running in Jersey and I don't, you know, I'm not getting up. But then again, you know, I'm gonna, you know, I don't do the stuff that they do. You know, I, I like to take my time and do stuff that's more, you know, artistic and whatnot. Not to say that those guys aren't artistic and stuff, but there's only so much you could do underneath a bridge at 2 o'clock in the morning in pitch black. Right. You know? So... Mas eu não posso mentir, né, velho, que é o, o ilegal é muito gostoso e eu acho que é o caminho também, não. A lot of people say this, like, the real graffiti is the illegal stuff. Uh, these illegal guys are, like, selling out. It's like, who cares what they're doing? But, you know, I, I have problems with the selling out. Então é isso. Aí em parceria com, com o Marcelo Verme, é, a gente procurou um muro na comunidade que fosse bem visível. Esse muro que a gente pintou pela primeira vez é o um muro que pode ser visto por, por mais de 10 de bairros, porque passam ônibus de todo, todo Salvador assim, nesse muro. E procuramos abordar temas é, sociais, temas que a nossa comunidade vinha sofrendo, como coisa do rural, o pessoal que vem do campo e não tem oportunidade na cidade. Então a gente fala de tudo, a gente fala do amor também, da família, né, velho, como é importante o papel da família. Do sexo também, que é um tabu, que as pessoas criam uma coisa muito grande em relação ao sexo, a gente procura falar de forma mais simples, que é normal, isso abaixo da educação, tudo isso a gente fala no, até nos murais. E a gente procurou fazer uma arte diferente, a gente procurou fazer um grafite diferente, não trabalhar mais com letreiros, porque é uma coisa que já vinha sendo muito feita, a gente quis trabalhar com personagens porque passa realmente mais coisas para a comunidade, para a população.
A gente tá falando também de outro lugar também, ou outra cultura também, né? É, a gente, particularmente o Brasil, a gente vem conquistando já, um, lutando para ter um espaço, para ter respeito com a arte de rua. É uma coisa que não é fácil, é uma coisa que depende muito do sistema também, colaborar, de, de perseguir, de, de dar um apoio. É, Pintar no Brasil já foi muito difícil, é, a polícia não, não, não respeitava, agredia mesmo, sabe, de, de pintar o, o cara todinho, sabe, ir pra cá todo pintado. Mas hoje a gente pô, tem um grande respeito, porque tem policiais, não são todos, não vou dizer que são todos, tem policiais que chegam pra apertar nossa irmão, o trabalho tá muito bom. E tal. Então tu acho que é conquista, sabe? A gente vem conquistando já um... Então hoje a gente pintando na rua, a população realmente salda mesmo, agradece a um, a um respeito grande. Mas todo, todo o Brasil vem conquistando espaço, tipo pintar o trem, Pintar os viadutos, sabe? pintar suportes que realmente é proibido mesmo, sabe? Pintar ônibus e a porra.